We all love dark rides, and Sally Corporation is one of the best companies that can give us some of the most incredible dark rides we can find. From E.T. Adventure to Jocko's Mardi Gras Madness, they have created lots of amazing dark rides. So today, we'll be taking a look at some of the coolest IP-based dark rides they have created. Scooby-Doo's Haunted Mansion, Six Flags Parks in 1992, Paramount Communications bought the King's Entertainment Company, a company that owned and operated six theme parks. The company converted five of these parks into Paramount Parks, adding the Paramount suffix to their names. They became Paramount's King's Island, Paramount's King's Dominion, Paramount's Great America, Paramount's Carowinds, and Paramount's Canada's Wonderland. And that's how Paramount Park was established. Paramount Parks wanted to enter the movie-based theme park business to compete with Universal, Disney, Six Flags, and and Cedar Fair. And to do this, they needed to bring some IP attractions to their parks. And the first of these IP-based attractions was Scooby-Doo's Haunted Mansion. The first ride opened in Canada's Wonderland. The park collaborated with Sally Corporation, who got the license from Hanna-Barbera to develop this ride in the late 1990s. And finally, on May 7, 2000, the ride opened. Scooby-Doo's Haunted Mansion was an interactive, family-friendly dark ride where guests would ride the mystery machine into Ghastly Manor, where they needed to shoot laser guns at ghosts and ghouls. They would also occasionally shoot at Scooby Snacks, which would trigger appearances from Scooby himself. The ride was an instant success, and it was even recognized as the best new children's ride that year. Because of this, similar versions of the ride were added to three other Paramount Park locations. It opened in Carowinds in 2001, King Islands as Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Castle in 2003, and King's Dominion as Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Mansion in 2004. Also in 2002, Six Flags bought into the ride concept and decided to bring it to some of their parks. So, the ride opened in 2002 as Scooby-Doo Ghost Blasters, The Mystery of the Haunted Mansion in Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, and as Scooby-Doo Ghost Blasters, The Mystery of the Scary Swamp in Six Flags St. Louis. This last one was different from the rest because it relied upon a water ride system. That's why it was changed from a haunted mansion to a swamp. Then in 2005, the ride also opened in the then Six Flags Zone Park Warner Bros. Park in Madrid, Spain as Scooby-Doo's Adventure, featuring a trackless ride system manufactured by ETF Ride Systems. The ride was loved by lots of guests, but then Cedar Fair bought all Paramount Parks, and the parks lost the license for rides. So a major retheming had to be done in many areas and of course rides. This included Scooby-Doo's Haunted Mansion after Cedar Fair decided not to renew their license for the Scooby-Doo and Mystery Inc. property. And it was up to Sally Corporation again to bring new life to these rides. So in 2009, King's Island, King's Dominion, Carowinds, and Canada's Wonderland closed their Scooby-Doo themed attractions so they could be replaced by the new Boo Blasters on Boo Hill Ride. Sally Corporation brought new techniques to the project that had been considered too expensive in the past and came up with new components that freshened the experience for guests. The color enhancement of the new ghosts and sets achieved a new 3D experience that could be seen using special glasses. So this was the end for Scooby at these parks. The ride remained open for many more years at both Six Flags parks, until Six Flags St. Louis announced that the ride would be permanently closed in 2014 to be replaced by Justice League, another Sally Corporation ride. And in late 2017, Six Flags Fiesta Texas announced that their installation of the ride would close permanently on January 7, 2018, so it could be replaced by a ride called Pirates of the Deep Sea, which opened on January 12th and was also created by Sally Corporation. Scooby-Doo's adventure remains open at the Warner Bros. Park in Madrid, and we can only hope that it will remain open for a long time. Reese's Extreme Cup Challenge, Hershey Park Situated in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Hershey Park was created around the concept of simplicity, a park for workers. This was the vision that Milton S. Hershey had when he started developing the park. The idea was to create a friendly and great environment for the workers and residents of Hershey, Pennsylvania. The park opened in 1907 and was an ideal spot for picnicking, boating, and canoeing. As time passed, this idea changed and evolved. Almost every year, a new building or attraction was added to the park. This included a merry-go-round, two bowling alleys, a tennis court, a large band shell, and a photography gallery. When the park celebrated its 20th anniversary, they added the first roller coaster, Wildcat, and by 1945, there were more than two dozen attractions. The park continued to grow and add more attractions, and in 1971, it entered a five-year plan to transform this park from a regional theme park to a popular national theme park. 
This brought many changes. For instance, the park's name was changed from Hershey Park to Hershey Park, and the pay-as-you-ride policy was replaced with a one-price admission plan. Since this change, the park became a pioneer in having one-of-a-kind attractions. They had Tidal Force in 1994, which was the world's tallest water plunge ride. They had Lightning Racer, the first dueling roller coaster in the US at the time. And they also opened the first hydraulic launch coaster that featured inversions. And to continue this tradition, in 2006, Hershey Park debuted Reese's Extreme Cup Challenge, the world's first interactive dark ride to pit car against car in a laser competition. The ride was, of course, created by Sally Corp, and it told the story of ex-sports superstars sportcasters, Sonny Pulaski surf star, and Kip Callahan all-star quarterback. Riders were split into two groups of four, the chocolate team and the peanut butter team, and they traveled through 10 competition zones featuring Reese's brand Extreme Sports. Ride cars were equipped with custom laser blasters to zap the targets and accumulate as many points as possible. At the end of the ride, each car's in-car scoring system totals that car's score and automatically compares the two totals, and replays the results to the event's two animatronics of Sonny and Kip. So, yep, that was a ride. And while the ride was… interesting, the system and interactive part of it were terrific. The ride lasted for a while until it closed in 2018, to be replaced by another Sally Corp Reese's themed attraction, Reese's Cup Fusion. Lost Kingdom Adventure Legoland Parks What's going on? Parker. Seriously? I told you we shouldn't have left you in charge of the passwords. I know, but I keep forgetting them. If you keep forgetting your passwords, you should download Dashlane. Dashlane is a password manager that saves and autofills all your passwords and login information on every website, so you never have to click Forgot Password again. It also saves all your credit cards and personal information, which allows you to save time when you want to use them. It works using a master password that you create. Dashlane encrypts all of your information, so you don't have to worry about hackers, and the app doesn't store your password, so your information will always be safe. This awesome app is free on your first device, and you can use our link in the description for a 30-day free trial of the premium version. No credit card needed. Every download helps us and this channel to keep creating, so if you are a part of the Duck Squad, click on the link in the description. Located in the north of San Diego, we can find Legoland California. Legoland California opened on March 20th, 1999. This was the first Legoland to open outside of Europe, and the third Legoland that opened altogether just behind its counterparts in Denmark and England. When the park opened, there were eight themed areas. The first area is called The Beginning, which is considered the park's entrance and gift shop. Then we can find Village Green, The Ridge, Fun Town, The Garden, Miniland, Castle Hill, and Imagination Zone. Then in 2002, Village Green and the Ridge were combined into one area called Explore Village, leaving Legoland with seven areas. In 2005, Legoland was purchased by Merlin Entertainments Group, leaving Lego just 30% of ownership share of the park. With this purchase came some changes. Areas were added to the Legoland like Pirate Shore, a pirate-themed area, and a miniland that took guests to Las Vegas. A new dark ride was also added. This ride was designed by Sally Corporation and the Legoland team, and it's called Lost Kingdom Adventure. Lost Kingdom Adventure opened in April of 2008 at Legoland California, and then opened a year later in Legoland Windsor as Laser Raiders. The ride was such a success with guests that Legoland asked Sally Corporation for two more Lost Kingdom Adventure rides, for Legoland Orlando and Legoland Malaysia. In 2012, it was also announced that the ride would open at Legoland Deutschland as Temple Expedition, but it would not be developed by Sally Corp. In this ride, explorers venture deep inside the ruins of an ancient Egyptian temple to stop evil Sir Sam Sinister from stealing the temple's hidden treasure and to rescue Miss Pippin Reed, a globetrotting reporter who frequently finds herself in danger and at the mercy of Sam Sinister. Johnny Thunder, Lego's popular Australian adventurer, welcomes the new explorers and explains the challenge. To save Pippin read and foil the planes of Sam Sinister. Throughout the ride, explorers use laser blasters to zap targets, earning points and causing such creatures as cobras, jackals, and mummies to pop up. Even a mummy who unravels from his wrappings. Explorers ride in a specifically designed four-passenger vehicle that's styled like a classic old-time jeep. 
Along with laser blasters, each Jeep is outfitted with digital scoring panels that track rider scores. A total of 10 blacklit scenes, including a spider's lair, dancing hieroglyphics, a professor's lab, a mummy, a gauntlet, and a treasure room. It is pretty cool to see animatronic Lego figures on this ride, and the adventure is pretty fun. Yosemite Sam and the Gold River Adventure, Six Flags Over Texas Shortly after it opened, real estate developer Angus G. Wynn Jr. visited Disneyland in California. He was very impressed and decided that Texas, his home state, needed a local park for entertainment. So he began planning this park in 1959, and construction began in 1960. This park was Six Flags Over Texas. The name Six Flags referred to the flags of the six different nations that had governed Texas, and on opening day, guests could visit areas themed to these flags. The park's first season lasted only 45 days, and ended on November 25, 1961. And it was a success, with over 550,000 visitors that first year. The 1960s was a decade of growth for the Six Flags company. They expanded Six Flags over Texas, adding new attractions. They opened their second park, Six Flags over Georgia, in 1967. And then their third park, Six Flags over Mid-America, in 1971. These two parks were the last original parks built by the company. After this, the company continued to grow by buying independent parks. The first one was Astroworld in Houston in 1975, then Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey in 1977, and Magic Mountain in Valencia, California in 1979. And then, in 1984, they bought the Great America theme park in Illinois from the Marriott Hotel chain. And with this last park, they also acquired the rights to the Warner Bros-owned Looney Tunes. This meant that from that moment on, Six Flags could use these animated characters in all of Six Flags' properties. This opened a world of possibilities, and the company started creating rides using these characters. One of these rides was Yosemite Sam and the Gold River Adventure. Yosemite Sam and the Gold River Adventure was a dark boat ride located in the Texas section of the park. It opened in 1992 and featured 29 animatronic characters, dozens of special effects, and colorful settings. Animatronic characters including everyone from the Stetson wearing bugs to a pistol packing Daffy Duck and Wile E. Coyote. The ride was an audience participation adventure, with characters talking directly to visitors who are dropped into a stream filled tunnel, blown up with dynamite, and hit by spouting water. The ride proved to be successful and was open for a long time until it closed in September 2018 prior to a storm. It was sadly never reopened due to extensive damage to the ride's interior. Six Flags continued to grow after, and it now owns more theme parks and water parks combined than any other amusement park company in the world. Casper's Birthday Blast The movie animation park studio Peric, or Maps Peric, is a relatively new park that had a pretty troubled history. Situated in Perak, Malaysia, this park was announced in 2014 and was supposed to open in 2015, but its grand opening was pushed back because construction wasn't finished yet. In April 2017, the theme park was said to have 96% of its construction completed, and it finally opened in June of that same year. In the beginning, the park had many attractions that were based on DreamWorks properties, and some Malaysia-inspired attractions, and in 2016, it was announced that the park would build a new area called Dreams. Zone. The new area would have two new attractions, one based on the popular 2010 DreamWorks movie Megamind. The other would be an interactive dark ride based on Casper the Friendly Ghost. This ride would be called Casper's Birthday Blast. The ride would take guests to Casper's birthday party, where his cousins would have slimed the entire mansion with sticky ghost goo. The ride asked for guests' help to save Casper's celebration. Guests would have to compete with other riders to see who could zap away the most goo and win the high score. The original design and scenic treatments for the ride were created by Sanderson Group, and of course, Sadly Corporation was responsible for the interactive systems, animatronic figures, animated props, ride system, soundtrack, and overall show control. Sadly, this ride was never built, and was ultimately cancelled because, in the end, the park never reached an agreement with DreamWorks for the rights of this character. And not only was the ride cancelled, but this whole area was shelved. So many of the attractions that they currently have will have to be redesigned. The park's future is uncertain because of this, and of low attendance that it has, but we really hope they can revamp it so it will prove to be successful in the near future. Five Nights at Freddy's Dark Ride We've talked about Five Nights at Freddy's before, and we could not miss the opportunity to talk about this new upcoming ride created by Sally Corp. 
This Scott Cotton creation is a worldwide phenomenon. With more than 10 million paid downloads, more than 16 billion views on YouTube, and being one of the brands with more sales in merchandise and toys nowadays, it also has a novel on the New York Times bestseller list, and will soon have a live action movie produced by the famous Bloomhouse and written by the legendary Chris Columbus. So of course, the next step is a dark ride. In November of 2016, Sally Corporation amazed IAAPA 2016 Expo attendees with the concept of a new dark ride based on Five Nights at Freddy's. The plans for this attraction are very ambitious, and when Sally Corporation pulls off what they had planned, this attraction will be amazing for any theme park. Five Nights at Freddy's The Ride is designed to be a real-time multiplayer version of the game. This dark ride mixes gaming, animatronics, large-scale video projections, special effects, and immersive sets and scenery. Fans will feel as if they had stepped inside a life-size version of the game as custom ride vehicles take them through a variety of scenes, both virtual and practical. Like the game, this interactive dark ride centers on Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where the riders must act as the new night security guards. Their mission, of course, is to defend themselves from the malfunctioning animatronic animal characters that roam the restaurant at night and try to stay alive until 6 a.m. Their only weapons will be flashlights that scare the robots away and have the ability to shut doors. The ride will have multiple endings, so sometimes the team will be able to survive till morning, and sometimes they won't. So as we said, the attraction is very ambitious. There's still no info on when it will be open or even where. But the good news is that the attraction can be acquired by any theme park, so there are lots of opportunities where we will be able to experience it. We really hope that someone picks this up soon, because we can see this video game working incredibly well as a full-fledged theme park attraction. And a terrifying one at that. Would you ride a Five Nights at Freddy's theme park ride? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe and download Dashlane. It is an amazing app, and every download helps to keep this channel alive. See you next week, Duck Squad!